Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at conservation of momentum, Newton's third law, and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by discussing when momentum is conserved and how we can use this to solve problems. Force is defined as the rate of change of momentum. So we've seen previously that another way to write force is that the force F is equal to the change in momentum P divided by the time taken for this momentum change, T. This implies that when there is no net force, momentum must remain constant. So if we've said the force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the time, if our force is zero, this tells us that the change in momentum is zero. So that means that the momentum is constant. So if the force is zero, the rate of change of momentum is zero, so the momentum isn't changing, so it must be constant. Therefore, if no resultant force acts on an object, its momentum stays constant. So for example, here we have a ball. We have a force F acting in one direction and another force F acting in the opposite direction. And this ball has a momentum P. Now, if these two forces are equal, we can then say that the resultant force is equal to F minus F, which is zero. So the resultant force is zero, which tells us that the momentum is not changing because the change in momentum is zero. So the momentum must be constant. We can extend this to think about a system of objects where each object has its own momentum. So we have three balls here and each ball will have its own momentum. For example, this one has a momentum P1 acting in that direction. This ball has a momentum P2 acting in a different direction. And this has a momentum P3, again acting in a different direction. And we can consider these three objects together as one system. If no external resultant force acts on the system of objects, then the total momentum of the system must remain constant. So again, we've got these three momenta of each individual object, and we're considering this as one system. So if we've got no external force acting on the system, so the external force is equal to zero, then this means that the total momentum of the system doesn't change. And the total momentum of the system is given by P1 plus P2 plus P3. So we add the three momenta together vectorially. So if there's no external force, this is conserved. And this is true regardless of what interactions and forces occur internal to the system, as long as there is no external resultant force. So for example, we have two balls here, and each ball has a momentum. So the first one has a momentum P1, the second one a momentum P2. And we can imagine that these two balls are exerting forces on each other. However, these forces are internal. So if we're considering this system as a whole, these forces act within the system. So we have a system of two objects. So these forces are acting within the system, which means there are no forces external to the system. And we've said that if there are no external forces, the total momentum, P, which is given by the sum of these two, P1 plus P2, that total momentum of the system as a whole is constant. Forces internal to the system can change each object's individual momentum, but only an external force can change the total momentum. So, because these two objects are exerting forces on each other, internal forces, their momentum can change. So these two values can change. However, the total momentum of the system is constant, and that's because there are no external forces. So although P1 and P2 can change individually, their sum, so the total momentum of the system, doesn't change. And this is equivalent to saying that we can model the objects in a system as one big object moving with the total momentum of the entire system. So 
Again, we're saying each ball has its own momentum, P1, P2. And we're going to consider this as one system. And we can model the momentum of the two objects as the momentum of the whole system. So the momentum of the whole system, the total momentum, is given by the sum of the individual momenta. So the total momentum of the system P is equal to P1 plus P2. And this total momentum of the system doesn't change as long as there's no external force acting on it. So this is equivalent to considering these two balls as one system, so it could be one object, one ball, with its own momentum P, that's equal to P1 plus P2, so that's from before. And if there's no force acting on this system or this one ball, then there's no change in momentum to this system. This total momentum can only be changed by the action of an external force. So we've said that this has a momentum P1 plus P2. And if an external force, F, acts on the system, then there is a change of momentum because we've said the force is equal to the change in momentum divided by time. So if there's an external force acting on the system, there must be a change in its momentum. So the momentum will change because of the force. And this is equivalent to our previous system of two balls. So it's as though we're considering again this system as a whole with the individual momenta P1 and P2 added together. So we're saying the total momentum P is equal to P1 plus P2. And if there's an external force acting on this system, this force causes a change of momentum because force is equal to change in momentum divided by time. So this means that the total momentum of the system, P, does change. This concept is the principle of conservation of momentum. The principle of conservation of momentum states that for a system of objects without a net external force, the total momentum remains constant. So we've said we could have a system of three balls here, for example. Each ball has its own momentum, P1, P2, P3. And if we're treating this as one system and there is no external force, then the total momentum remains constant. And this comes from the principle of conservation of momentum. And it's very useful when we solve more difficult problems with momenta of different objects. So for example, we can treat two objects about to collide with no external forces as a system in which momentum is the same before and after the collision. So before the collision, each object has a momentum P1 and P2 and they collide. We can treat this as the system before the collision. So if there is no external force, we can examine the momentum before the collision and this total momentum before, which is equal to P1 plus P2, but they're acting in opposite directions, is going to equal the momentum after the collision of this whole system. So the momentum before equals the momentum after as long as there is no external force. So after the collision, the external force is still zero. So now after the collision, the objects have different momenta. This one has momentum P1, this one has momentum P2, but we can see they're acting in different directions. So the momentum of the individual objects changes. However, because of the principle of conservation of momentum, the total momentum doesn't change. So we can actually use the principle of conservation of momentum to explain Newton's third law. And we're going to see how we can do this now. Recall the statement of Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So we've seen this in the forces and equilibrium section. So this explains why when a person punches a wall, their fist hurts. And it's because the wall exerts a reaction force back 
on their fist. So this person punches the wall with a force F, however the wall exerts an equal and opposite force F onto the person's fist, which is what causes the pain, and that's due to Newton's third law. So we can derive Newton's third law by considering the momentum of a fist punching a wall. So when a fist punches a wall, it's got a certain amount of momentum, P, because it's moving, so it's got a velocity and it's got a mass, so it has a momentum. We've seen that force is defined as the rate of change of momentum. So we've seen how momentum links to force. So the force F is equal to the change of momentum divided by time. Or we can write this as the momentum before minus the momentum after. And we divide this by time again. Therefore, when a force is exerted on the wall by the person's fist, the wall should have a change in its momentum. So the person's fist exerts a force F on the wall, and this causes the wall to experience a change in momentum, delta P. And this is because force is equal to the change in momentum divided by time. So if it's experiencing a force, it must be experiencing a change in momentum. So we've said force is equal to change in momentum divided by time. And obviously, since the wall is experiencing a force, the force must be greater than zero. So that must mean that the change in momentum must be greater than zero. So the force causes a change in momentum of the wall. However, we've seen that we can treat the person in the wall as a system of interacting objects with no external forces acting on it. So if we're considering this as a whole system, when the fist exerts a force on the wall, this is an internal force within the system. So we've got an internal force. So this means that there are no external forces acting on the system. So this means we know that the system's momentum is not going to change. So due to the principle of conservation of momentum, inside this system of interacting objects, total momentum must be conserved. So if we're considering this as one system and there's no external force, the total momentum is conserved. This means when a change in momentum is introduced by the force of the fist hitting the wall, there must be an equal and opposite change in momentum that keeps total momentum the same. So we've said the wall experiences a change in momentum due to the fist. However, if the total momentum in the system doesn't change, that must mean there is also a change in momentum that the fist experiences due to the fact that it's come into contact with the wall. So this here is our change in momentum of the fist. And because the total momentum of the system doesn't change, this tells us that these two changes in momentum must be equal, but they must act in opposite directions. So this tells us that the total change in momentum of the system is going to be equal to delta P minus delta P because they're acting in opposite directions, which is zero kilograms meters per second. So we can see that the total momentum of the system doesn't change, it's conserved. The amount of time that the fist spends in contact with the wall is the same as the amount of time that the wall spends in contact with the fist. So the fist spends a time T in contact with the wall, and the wall spends a time t in contact with the fist. So the time t in which both the wall and the fist spend in contact with each other is the same. So we can use this to write the force experienced by the wall due to the fist and the force experienced by the fist due to the wall. So we can say that the force on the wall, F, is equal to the change in momentum, because we've said the wall experiences a change in momentum due to the fist, divided by the time t that the fist spends in contact with the wall. And then we can do the same for the force on the fist. So we've said that the change in momentum of the fist is equal and opposite. So it's the same magnitude, but it acts in the opposite direction, which means we need to include a minus sign when we put it into our equation. And then we've said that the time taken, t, is the same. So we divide by t. So we can see then that we've got delta p 
divided by t here, that's the force on the wall, and we've got minus delta p divided by t, which is the force on the fist. So they're the same and they're opposite. So this gives us the equal and opposite reaction force described by Newton's third law. So we've got our force F in this direction, and then our force minus F in the opposite direction. So they are equal and opposite in magnitude. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.